Coming up. The designs that I use, the ancient ones, that's art that someone hundreds of years ago made. And so all I'm doing is is duplicating, so to say, what they've done, and I'm showing off what good artists we had beforehand. Cherokee gourd artist Verna Bates unmasks the inspiration behind her award-winning designs. And Cherokee fashion model Colby Britton goes to work in the Big Apple, chasing big dreams. I just try to live every day and just realize that I'm really blessed with what I have and that, you know, if something big does happen, then, you know, that would be amazing. And his gentle voice carries a strong message. What I really appreciate about what I do now is I get to listen to the elders. I hear a lot of stories from the elders and, and I can re relate to a lot of their stories because I grew up that way too. Cherokee speaker and radio host Dennis Sixkiller archives Cherokee history, culture, and traditions from the mouths of our elders. The Cherokees. A thriving American Indian tribe. Our history. Our culture. Our people. Our future. The principles of a historic nation sewn into the fabric of a modern world. Hundreds of thousands strong, learning, growing, succeeding, and steadfast. In the past, we have persevered through struggle, but the future is ours to write. OCO. 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 These are the voices of the Cherokee people. I'm Principal Chief Bill John Baker, OCO, and welcome to the Cherokee Nation. We're so proud to share our stories with you. Wado. OCO, it's how we say hello in Cherokee. Today's show takes us from rural Oklahoma to the streets of New York City as we introduce you to three Cherokee Nation citizens leaving a mark on the world around them. At 19 years old, Colby Britton is in his prime, trying to make it big as a model, breaking into the fashion industry. Colby recently got a big break when he was signed by an elite talent agency in New York City. Hi, Hi Colby, I'm, I'm Jennifer. Nice to meet you, Jennifer. Cool. Colby. All right, so what are we doing today? Photo shoot for the portfolio. People ask me how I got into it, and you know, I would go to the mall, or I would, or I would just be somewhere, and people would be like, "Like, are you model? Do you model?" And I was always like, "No." Like, I got that comment so many times that I, I told my mom, I was like, "Mom, I was like, I was like, this has got to be like a sign from God that like I need to go out and do this because like I've got this so many times. Like, there's no way that if I go do it, it can be wrong." Ended up signing with Kim Dawson. They're an agency in Dallas. They handle talent. They handle. Um, voiceover, they handle fashion, runway, they've basically taken me under their wing and just kind of showed me the ropes. One of the first things I ever learned was like not to wear socks, like tight socks because then you got like sock lines so you know it shows up on camera. I was born and raised in Tahlequah, um, 18 years until I left in Dallas. And I think once you're in the same place for so long, especially in a small town, um, you kind of like um, forget about everything that's actually there. Once I moved to Dallas, I realized that, and now every time I come home, I really, I really just enjoy being home and say I love Tahlequah. I left Tahlequah at, you know, I was like 18 years old, and then, I mean, here I am in Dallas living by myself. It was a little tough for a while because I didn't know anybody. I didn't know where I was going, you know, but uh, I got it figured out, and I met some friends, and it all worked out. at first and I was kind of worried about it at the first year uh, up until now it's been it's been pretty busy so now I'm going to New York so it worked out starting out in New York as you know a new face you have to uh, um, put in your time and um, build yourself up I've been here for you know less than two months and I've worked um, several times. I've got a, a couple clients that I've been working for repetitively, so that's really good too. 
I came across him while discussing his book and whether we should represent him or not and determined that he would be a good one to uh, represent and get him to that level of success that we expect from all of our models. This is the first year that they had Men's Fashion Week by itself, usually it's in September with the women's, but they did uh, exclusive uh, uh, this year for the first time. I booked this this show for us, Park and Ronin, and you know it was a really fun uh, experience. The Park and Ronin's like um, swimwear slash beachwear. Um, it's very like casual. Most of the stuff we wore in the show was uh, you know swimwear. It was definitely a fun experience. I've been a little bit of a tourist. Um, I went to the Whitney Museum the other day. Uh, that was pretty cool. Going to like the World Trade Center and you know like the Chelsea Piers over where I played basketball. It's just a really nice running area. So it's like it's just taking in all the sights. There's so many people that. Every day, like every moment, you can you always see somebody different. You always see you know something different. Like everybody's from you know a, a different background. They have a different culture, a different heritage. So it's like um, you know I I walk around. People are like, "Where are you from?" I'm like, "Oklahoma." And they're like, "Oh, that's cool." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm, you know I'm Native American. I'm Cherokee." And they're like, "What is that?" When I walk around, you see so many different people from so many different places every day. Uh, you really wonder, you know, what, what it's like in their culture. So it's like, um, it makes you think about your culture as their, uh, and theirs as well. So it's, it's crazy just because there's so many, you know, so many different people. Overall, I would say, you know, it's been a really, um, it's been a really good trip here. And I'm, I'm excited to go home for a little bit and then come back for good. You know, I'd really like to, get really lucky and you know make it really big and make a lot of money and be famous and that type of thing but at the same time it's like you know you want to make it big make a lot of money you know be really successful but it's just I don't think you can look at it that way I think the best way to look at it is just come up here and enjoy the fact that you know I live in New York City at 19 years old and I'm able to make money um, I just try to live every day and just realize that I'm really blessed with what I have and that, you know, if something big does happen, then, you know, that would be amazing. Each year on Labor Day weekend, thousands of people visit the Cherokee Nation's capital city in Tahlequah, Oklahoma for Cherokee National Holiday. It's a time to celebrate our vibrant culture and share it with the world. This year was the 63rd annual holiday celebrating homes, health, and hope. The holiday packed dozens of events into the three-day weekend. Each year, people visit Cherokee Nation museums free of charge, shop with more than 100 Native American vendors, and watch the annual parade, cultural demonstrations, and the annual powwow. Principal Chief Bill John Baker gave the annual State of the Nation address, highlighting the nation's progress. This year, he also announced the nomination of a Secretary of Natural Resources to protect the tribe's land, air, and water. This golden age envisions a stronger economy where more Cherokees are healthy, live in good homes and earn good wages with quality jobs. But more importantly, this golden age will create a sound, a sustainable path for generations to come. More than 100,000 people come to Cherokee National Holiday every year. To plan your trip to the Cherokee Nation, go to visitcherokeenation.com. One of the artists featured at Holiday and well known throughout the Cherokee Nation is Verna Bates. Verna has her hands in all kinds of different art, but is best known for the masks she makes with the gourds grown right here in her garden. Grandmother could speak, uh, she was fluent. In my Cherokee name, she gave it to me when I was born, Gataya, and a lot of people will ask me, what does it mean? And I would love to be able to tell them that it means something romantic like babbling brook or what have you, but it simply means Verna. My husband says it means running mouth. <laughs> but that's not true. <laughs>
I'm Verna Bates and I'm a Cherokee artist specializing in gourd art. Uh, this is my studio, Gourds Etc. I have five siblings. One of them was uh, working as a, an artist. She brought me this dipper gourd and she la handed it to me and she laughed and she said, here, see what you can do with this. Turned around and walked away. I put it up on a shelf and left it there. It probably laid there for close to a year. And then one day I take it down, cleaned it up, and that was the beginning. I started out with the dipper gourds and then I added uh, the gourd bowls just about, I think maybe six or seven years ago now. I don't know, time gets away from me. I started making the Cherokee masks. Uh, some are made in the more traditional way in that they're hand stitched. This guy right here has wood burn tattoos on his face. They're ancient designs. A long time ago, after we were exposed to the Europeans to kind of build up our self-esteem, we would create masks to mock, to make fun of those who put us down or put us in those bad situations. I incorporate the uh, designs, the ancient designs and the syllabary because I am proud of my Cherokee heritage. The designs that I use the ancient ones, that's art that someone hundreds of years ago made. And so all I'm doing is, is duplicating, so to say, what they've done, and I'm showing off what good artists we had beforehand. I'm just proud of what we've done. But when people come to visit me here, if they buy a piece of art, wonderful. But if they don't, because of the stories, because of the, the designs, what have you, and the, and the inf information that I give them about this, if they don't buy a piece of art, they're still leaving with some education. So it's not just being an artist, you're being a teacher, so you need to know what you're talking about. My husband has been awesome, and he gets out there and he does all the tilling and the weeding, and, and uh, he's grown all my gourds all these years since then. Verna has a contagious personality. Very sincere, very enthusiastic about everything she does in life. She is so compassionate about her artwork that I can't help but support her to whatever limit it takes, you know, whatever she desires to do. She puts her whole heart into it. My husband is my hero. Uh, we've been uh, together 23 years, working on 24. I've never known anybody so kind had so much peace, I guess, and he's my partner in crime. We do everything together. I tell people that if uh, we, if there's ever a car wreck and you only find one, you gotta look, there's the other one's there somewhere. <laughs> We're always together. He's very supportive, very supportive. He's not only supplied me with my gourds, we have visitors that come and purchase these from us. This year, we decided to grow some heirloom dipper gourds. An heirloom, it is an old, old variety. It's, uh, it's part of your past. So it is, yeah, it's very special. I have um, four grandchildren. The two younger ones, Tanner and Tucker, are following in my artistic footsteps, if you will. And I can't help but just beam with pride. I'm amazed at how much they improve each year. If I don't teach them about their culture, their heritage, their history, it's going to get lost. I want them to be excited and know as much as they can possibly know about themselves so that one day when they're adults, they can pass this on to their children and grandchildren. I, I love what I do. There's never a boring moment. Before I go to an art show, my heart still just flutters. I'm still so excited. And I still say that when the time comes that I no longer get excited about the arts, I'm going to quit, and I will. But until then, I'm hanging in there. If you'd like to see more of Verna's work, we've posted a link to her website on ours. Just go to oco.tv and click on links mentioned. Cherokee Nation Principal Chief Bill John Baker, Deputy Chief S. Joe Crittenden, and eight tribal counselors were sworn into office after winning this year's election. 
each pledged to preserve, protect, and defend the Cherokee Nation Constitution for their four-year term. They also vowed to promote the culture, heritage, and traditions of the Cherokee Nation. More than 1,000 people attended the swearing-in and listened as Chief Baker vowed to continue improving the lives of Cherokee Nation citizens. Looking ahead, I mean, we're going to take every opportunity that, uh, that comes our way to create jobs for Cherokees, to make the lives of Cherokees better, whether it's uh, college training, vocational training, uh, whether it's starting our own medical school. Uh, we're going to look for every one of those opportunities to change the lives of Cherokees uh, and, and, and for generations to come. Everyone celebrated the inauguration with a traditional Cherokee meal following the ceremony. On September 16, 1893, a settler named William S. Prettyman captured historic images of the final Oklahoma land run before joining in the race himself. Historians say up to 125,000 people lined up that day, on horseback, with wagons, and on foot, taking off at the sound of gunshots to claim their own piece of the six-plus million acres offered up by the federal government. That land belonged to the Cherokee Nation just months before, granted to the tribe through the treaties of 1828 and 1835. It was called the Cherokee Outlet, 7 million acres that extended 220 miles along the northern border of present-day Oklahoma. When the treaties were written, the government guaranteed that this land would be part of the tribe's permanent home out west. But after the American Civil War, the federal government changed its mind and purchased more than 6 million acres of the outlet for $1.40 an acre, less than half of what the Cherokees believed it was worth. President Grover Cleveland designated September 16, 1893 as the date of the run, which was the largest land opening in U.S. history. Cherokee Nation is urging citizens to change their addresses in exchange for a free one-year subscription to the Cherokee Phoenix newspaper. The Citizens Access to Transparency Initiative is a partnership between the Independent Tribal Newspaper and Chief Bill John Baker's office. Citizens who update their addresses at Cherokee.org will receive their first free issue this fall. Uh, the citizens who uh, receive the Cherokee Phoenix and have it delivered uh, to their home uh, They'll get uh, stories that are a mix of uh, timely stories, things that are recent events in the Cherokee Nation, but they'll also get a lot of feature content as well, stories about Cherokee artists, Cherokee youth, Cherokee entrepreneurs and business owners. Tribal leaders hope the free subscription will motivate Cherokees to update their addresses. To learn how to update your address with tribal registration, just go to oco.tv and click on links mentioned. Jalagi Iniwani He. Let's talk Cherokee. First phrase in English. Tell me in Cherokee. Jalagi Ha Hino Herling. Tell me in Cherokee. Jalagi Ha Hino Herling. Say it again. Sigu Jinihiwi. Say it again. Sigu Jinihiwi. Say it slow. Uskanoli niwi. Say it slow. Uskanoli niwi. Dennis Sixkiller has been the voice of the Cherokee people, hosting the nation's radio show, Cherokee Voices, Cherokee Sounds, for 11 years. The show is broadcast in both Cherokee and English and archives the fading voices of our Cherokee elders. No one intervened 
My name is Dennis Sixkiller, and I'm a translator specialist, and also I do a radio program for called uh, Turkey Voices and Turkey Sounds. There's a guy who has lost his son a few years ago that I knew as I grew up in Jay, and I was living in Tahlequah just a few years ago, and I called back home, and I told him I was sorry to hear about his loss. And he said, Dennis, what do you do now? I said, uh, I do... Uh, translations and then do a race program for Cherokee Nation. He said, he got quiet for a second and said, how'd you get so smart? <laughs> I, said, I didn't. I said, I have a lot of people fooled. Because <laughs> he remembered the way I was back then. Oh, she didn't have done that. He risked it. No, no, he didn't have done it. He got this, it's a lot uneasy like that. The guy can't even make it. But I never dreamed I'd be doing what I'm doing now. But what I really appreciate about what I do now is I get to listen to the elders. I hear a lot of stories from the elders, and and I can re relate to a lot of their stories because I grew up that way too. I was born and raised in Jay, Oklahoma, in a two-room house. There was uh, seven uh, children and uh, with our parents and we didn't have no running water or any electricity. Actually, when I was a kid, it wasn't too bad because I didn't know a whole lot better than that. Than that. But when I think about it now, you know, yeah, it's, it was rough, it was hard. And every time we got in trouble, one was going in trouble like that. He would sit us down and lecture us in Cherokee, all in Cherokee, and uh, I used to hate that. I thought it was like for hours, but it was probably about five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever at the most, you know, but man, that was worse than getting a spanking. We get up early, but in order to listen to the radio, but this is just my normal routine. That rain sounds good through the window. <laughs> it's it's really good. I mean, I, we don't we try not to miss it. <laughs> I used to work on Sunday mornings. And just right before I left, well, uh, Dennis would start giving the words out, and I'd run and I'd get the get paper and copy it. Then out the door, I would go to work. <laughs> it's just strange. We have to move the radio from corner to corner to try to get us a good station or hold it up in the air. Sometimes we take turns holding. <laughs> but when the turkey words come on, we have to sit, find a place to set it down. Now it's time for turkey words. And before I give you the words, I'll give you the turkey vowels. We have six vowels in our language. We have the A, E, I, O, U, and V. And here are their sounds. All, A, E. In the home, it was all turkey. I never, honestly, I can, I can honestly say that my mom and dad, to each other, they never spoke any English that I know of. They couldn't hear uh, uh, Cherokee songs, all the songs on the radio or in Cherokee. I like to keep it that way because a lot of people do appreciate these songs. Back in 1973, they recorded Elder singing. And the first time I, sung, I put that on here, I just started crying. Because you know, <sighs> I thought about all of our elders. You know, how, how that they're gone on, and I could still hear them singing. And I still see them sitting there. And, Maybe my heart 
I feel good down the way. But on the other hand, it's sad. And because this one was my uncle, was Sam Hyder. And he could really sing and, and I just miss those times, you know. It's about all I can say about that. It was really touching. Don't think about though, isn't it? <laughs> and that's why this program is so important to me. <laughs> well, you know what time it is. Time for it to part ways again already. Goes by pretty quick, doesn't it? And I want to thank each and one of you for tuning in today to join me. I always appreciate that. And call in sometimes and let me know about it. And if you're a speaker, call me. And if you want to talk on the radio, I'll sure come to your house and visit you. We can talk all the turkey you want. You might want to sing a song or two if you're a singer. Had a little bit of rain this year recently, and it's always good to have rain. I wonder why it always rains right after I mow my lawn. Sometimes I wonder. I guess that's how it goes sometimes, isn't it? Until next week, please take care. Well done. Coming up next time on OCO, Voices of the Cherokee People. Mason Fine, he's been ranked among the top five high school football quarterbacks in the country. I don't think about the pressure. I just go out there and play the game I love. I don't think about the fans. I just think about my team and the coaches and moving the ball down the field and scoring a touchdown. But it's not just his athletic ability that makes him a star Cherokee citizen. Watch his story and more next time on OCO, Voices of the Cherokee People. We hope you enjoyed today's show, and remember you can always watch complete episodes and share your favorite stories on our website, oco.tv. There is no Cherokee word for goodbye because we know we'll see you again. So until next time, Wado. If you'd like to visit the Cherokee Nation or for more information on Cherokee Nation attractions, go to visitcherokeenation.com. Coming to the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Tulsa, October 10th and 11th, the annual Cherokee Art Market, a juried art show. It's become one of the most prestigious and largest intertribal Native American art markets in the country. To find out more, go to cherokeeartmarket.com.